Welcome along, fellow time travelers and strange historians. This time around, we're going to travel back in time to 1968 and talk about Rosemary's Baby and the Dakota. Before I begin, please like and share the show and subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. Now please join me around the campfire. Rosemary's Baby is a psychological horror film released in 1968, directed by Roman Polanski and based on the novel of the same name by Ira Levin. The story follows Rosemary Woodhouse, a young married woman played by Mia Farrow, who moves into an old New York City apartment building with her husband Guy, a struggling actor. Oh, it's a wonderful apartment. I love it. See what she's trying to do? She's trying to get you lower the rent. <laughs> After settling into their new home, the couple decides to conceive a child. Are oh, you pregnant? No, not yet. Shortly thereafter, Rosemary becomes pregnant under strange and disturbing circumstances. We have to make a baby. Dr. Hill? Congratulations. You're pregnant. She is surrounded by overly attentive and intrusive neighbors, particularly an elderly couple, Minnie and Roman Castavet, who have an odd and unsettling interest in her pregnancy. Now to a fine, healthy baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're not religious, my dear, are you? As the story progresses, Rosemary becomes increasingly isolated and paranoid, suffering from pain and experiencing bizarre dreams. I have a pain. Here. Pain like that is a warning that something isn't right. It's alive! She grows suspicious of her husband and neighbors, suspecting that they might be part of a satanic cult. With malevolent intentions toward her unborn child. That you got to do that was on his desk. Read what they do, God. We're your friends, Rosemary. You witches! Go to hell! The film builds on this atmosphere of paranoia, claustrophobia, and the blurring of reality and hallucination. You know how actors are, they're all a bit self-centered. The climax of the movie reveals the horrifying truth about her baby and the real intentions of the Castavets and their associates, culminating in a chilling and iconic ending. The film is notable for its effective building of suspense and horror. And so as a result, Rosemary's Baby effectively created a chilling atmosphere that has left a lasting impression on audiences. What have you done to him, you maniac? The film's portrayal of the Dakota as the setting for sinister supernatural happenings superimposed fictional horror onto the real location in the minds of fans of the film. The Dakota was chosen as the setting because it features architectural influences which can seem eerie or ominous particularly in dim light or under certain atmospheric conditions. This enhances the spooky aura perceived by those familiar with its cinematic portrayal. Films often play a powerful role in shaping cultural perceptions. The success and horror genre of Rosemary's Baby have embedded the Dakota within a narrative framework that highlights mystery and the supernatural. This storytelling effect has been long lasting and seems to overshadow the building's other historical and architectural qualities. In fact, these factors have combined to create and perpetuate the idea of the Dakota as a haunted place, despite its actual history and the daily lives of its residents. It's a testament to the power of film and popular culture to influence perceptions of real-world locations. In addition to that, the notion that Rosemary's baby was cursed what brought misfortune to those associated with it stems from a series of tragic 
and unsettling events surrounding the film, which has created an aura of superstition and speculation about its influence. The main factors contributing to the perception of the film as evil and its supposed impact on those involved include the murder of Sharon Tate. Roman Plansky's wife, actress Sharon Tate, was murdered by the Manson family in 1969, just a year after the film's release. Sharon was eight months pregnant at the time, which drew a grim parallel to the movie's themes of satanic rituals and pregnancy. Charles Manson believed that the Beatles' music contained messages directed towards him, particularly the song Helter Skelter. His distorted interpretation extended to other cultural artifacts, including Rosemary's Baby, which he believed symbolized the societal decay his cult was battling against. This bizarre linkage contributed to the aura of evil surrounding the film. Roman Polanski's life was fraught with tragedy and controversy following the film. Beyond the murder of his wife, Polanski later faced legal troubles and scandal leading to a long period of legal exile from the United States. These events fed into the narrative of a curse associated with the film. John Lennon was murdered in front of this building in 1980. The connection of the building to both the film and Charles Manson's obsession with the Beatles and their song Helter Skelter and John Lennon's untimely death contributed to the notion of a curse, linking the location and its associated stories with tragedy. The connection here is mostly geographical and symbolic, but it reinforced the notion of a curse because John Lennon's life ended in such a dramatic and violent way at a location deeply linked to the movie. The film itself deals with intense psychological and supernatural themes, which unsettles viewers and have given rise to speculations about its impact. In a cultural context, where media and popular culture often explore themes of curses and superstitions, such tragic coincidences as those associated with Rosemary's Baby have led people to form connections, whether real or imagined. Rosemary's Baby is known for its deeply disturbing atmosphere, which plays on fears of betrayal and unseen malevolent forces. This chilling effect has made it easier for people to believe that the film has had supernatural or negative influences in real life. The idea that a film or artwork can carry a curse is not unique to Rosemary's Baby. It is part of a broader genre of urban legends and folklore that often surrounds prominent works perceived as groundbreaking or unsettling. These stories often enhance the mystique and cultural memory of a film, but are generally based more on coincidence and human tendency to find patterns than on any factual basis. The film's content itself, focusing on Satanism, the occult, and conspiracy, naturally attracts superstitions and associations with evil. The intense and unsettling nature of the movie might make people more inclined to believe in or concoct supernatural explanations for the misfortunes related to its cast and crew. The late 1960s and early 1970s were a period of significant cultural turmoil and fascination with the occult in the United States. This atmosphere amplified the impact and reception of Rosemary's Baby making it a focal point for discussions of curses and evil influence. The psychological impact of the film, coupled with real-life tragic events, has created a fertile ground for rumors of a curse. These factors combined lead to pervasive myths surrounding Rosemary's Baby, suggesting the film was somehow evil or cursed, and that this malevolence extended to those associated with it. While these are merely coincidences and cultural interpretations, they contribute significantly to the film's legacy as a haunting piece of cinema history. Ultimately, films like Rosemary's Baby and significant events, such as John Lennon's tragic death outside the Dakota, have added to the building's haunted and eerie reputation. 
These cultural milestones tend to overshadow other facets of the building, perpetuating a darker image that doesn't reflect its true nature. In reality, the Dakota is a beautifully designed building, featuring a cheerful buff yellow brick facade, conceived with great intentions by Edward C. Clark and Henry Janeway Harnenberg. Since its completion in 1884, it has hosted countless residents and visitors who have created and cherished a myriad of positive experiences in and around the Dakota. Do you think that the film is cursed? And do you think that the Dakota is haunted or spooky or eerie because Roman Polanski used exterior shots of the building for his film? Also, are you one of the fans of the film who always thought that it was filmed inside the Dakota rather than sound stages? Kindly let me know your thoughts about all this in the comments below. Kindly remember to like, share, and subscribe and hit the notification bell because there will be more shows like this one and I hope you check those out too. Please check out the links below to learn how to support my research and productions. Specifically, I'd really appreciate it if you could become a member of this channel and or join me on Patreon. You could also leave a super thanks in the comments below. Kindly be kind to all of our fellow Earthlings and please do not harm or eat them. They don't like that. Remember, for the benefit of compassion for all living things and their own health, brilliant people throughout history chose a plant-based diet. And please do yourself a favor and go to a local shelter and adopt a cat or a dog or both. You and they will be very glad that you did. Until next time, I wish you safe travels on all your journeys.